And there were a few things people wanted to say, and obviously one of them was, thank you all for coming. And um, we can't believe this day has actually arrived, because <laughs> those who know Sally and Richard know what they're like. Need I say any more? I don't think so. Um, it, it was a lovely day though, and we really enjoyed it, until obviously Pete had to go home, but um, never mind, these things happen. And the other thing is, what else was I going to say, Smith? You're going to talk, um, talk about how wonderful it is to have Richard as your son. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> okay, Richard. Richard came to see us, and Sally was very apprehensive about bringing Richard to meet us. I do not know why, because Richard came the first time to see us. Sally brought him down, introduced us. He ate us out of house and home, and then he had a few drinks and fell asleep on the sofa. And actually, he's continued to do that ever since. <laughs> so, um, what more can I say? Um, I just want to say, uh, uh, that's it really, and thank you for those people who needed to put a bomb under Sally, looking at no one in particular. Her sister, <laughs> because Sally and Richard are so laid back, they're like, yeah, whatever. But some things you do really need to get organised. But they got there in the end. So thank you to all those people who helped and got them here today. And I hope you all raise your glasses and wish them all the best, because we do. And in Pete's absence, happy, many happy days to come. Cheers. A charming young man. Oh, when you said um, when you said laid back, I just said <laughs> bone idol. But anyway. um, so uh, it's my, my job now to introduce uh, the groom, Mr. Richard Haywood. <laughs> Thanks very much for honouring us with your presence today. Uh, some people here have travelled a great way and we really appreciate it. I did find a bit of Pete's speech on the floor, so I'm just going give to give you the first couple of lines. Richard is the best thing that ever happened to our family. <laughs> That's all you need to hear. Right? So, uh, I was going to thank Pete for his kind words, but I'll thank Pauline. Um, I was going to talk about how many years I've spent looking for Pete's golf balls in the bushes, but it doesn't really go with your pose, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so, um, all of Sally's family have made me feel very welcome right from the start. Um, Sorry, sorry. Um, so they've all made me feel very welcome right from the start. Um, and I just want to let them know I don't really hate the ball games they make me play as much as when I make out. And also for the very unfair marking they give me when we do our own My Kitchen Rules. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully that'll improve now I'm you know, part of the family properly. Nah, I've only got one bit. Yeah, lasagna. Lasagna. Oh, it's a good lasagna to be fair. It's a great lasagna. <laughs> So, on behalf of myself and Sally, we would like to take this opportunity to thank our parents for the love and support they've always shown us, through thick and thin, me possibly being the thick. Um, we, we came to Melbourne nearly six years ago, and a lot of people in this room helped us settle in with places to stay, work opportunities, and just being good friends. Um, so, we love that you're here to share today with us. Um, yeah. 
there's also a few very special people to both of us that can't be here today. So if you could please raise your glasses to absent friends and family. That'd be great. Absent friends and family. Um, I also very quickly want to thank some people for helping us pull the day together. Uh, Zoe for the amazing cake and organising the table decorations, thank you so much. Um, Johnny, here's Johnny. <laughs> Johnny for uh, putting the music together. Johnny! This <laughs> music's not that good. More than the sun. Joe took some fun of us earlier. She's very talented with the camera, so thank you, Joe. Um, she probably have to be because we don't take photos very well, so we generally aren't looking the right way. So if you can get a good one, that'd be great. Thank you. Had a had a great Bucks Day and night. So. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, it'd be good when I get there, right? Okay, so Benno. Benno Augers, the great Bucks night for me. He was ably assisted by Junebo and, <laughs> and Reggie. Um, that's probably the most Australian thing I've ever said, but thanks, boys. Um, I did not come back with everything I left with. Um, some, some of that being dignity, but thank you for that. We had a good day. Okay. Uh, I'm also very fortunate to have two best men here that I've known for over 20 years. So I've got Rob and Sam. Sam is a bit of a storyteller and has been known to exaggerate slightly. <laughs> Take everything with a little pinch of salt. <laughs> Rob may lose some concentration while he's speaking as he thinks about how much he looks like David Beckham. Okay, so we've had a great week. Um, but I'm really looking forward to you going home. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to get your chance very shortly. Okay, uh, so um, our bridesmaids and the bridal party look fantastic. So if you could raise your glass to the bridal party, that would be great. The bridal party. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, you look beautiful today. Um, I'm so happy thinking about the time we will spend together, the laughs we will share, the things we will see, and even the 5 a.m. lifts lifts to the train station when it's raining. <laughs> you, make, you make me a better person, and I feel so lucky to call you my wife. Please raise your glasses to the beautiful bride. <laughs> Eleven years ago, a few of us were in O'Neill's in Kingston. So for all the Aussies out there, think slug and lettuce in full. Very similar sort of place. We started dancing. Sally was a student nurse and still refers to that period of her life as her drinking stage. <laughs> She asked me what I did 11 times for a job. I gave her 11 different answers. Somehow numbers were exchanged and lying on the sofa the next day, I got a call. I didn't recognise the number, but it was the girl from the night before. Asking for a man called Barry. <laughs> Somehow we got here today. That's all from me. Please can we toast Barry and Sally. <laughs> Thank you.
Right, just for a moment, I want you all to imagine you're about to do a skydive. <laughs> you sit on the edge of the plane, and you look down at the ground before you, you jump out, and you realise your parachute is not going to open. And spare a thought for Sally, because that's exactly how she is feeling. <laughs> The gravity of what she has done must be dawning on her. <laughs> and Sally, you're a very, very brave lady <laughs> to take such a leap of faith with what only can be described as the imbecile that is sat beside you. Nice. My name's Sam. And this is Rob. And we're Barry's best men. <laughs> uh, so we've been friends with Richard since our school days, and um, we've shared some really good times. And we've seen a tall, gangly, scruffy, and somewhat uncomfortable young lad grow up to be a tall and scruffy and somewhat uncomfortable adult. <laughs> <laughs> so ten years ago, Richard did me the honour of being my best man, and I've been waiting for this opportunity ever since. <laughs> um, I'm told there's plenty of reasons to visit this wonderful country. In my case, it's revenge. <laughs> My first time in Oz, and um, Rob's given me some useful tips when addressing the locals. Uh, apparently, you're not the smartest bunch, so uh, speak, speak slowly and uh, avoid using long and complicated words. Now, before I got here, I already knew a lot of stuff about Australians, the stuff that everyone knows. You're too lazy to wash, <laughs> which basically is where the phrase the Aussie wash comes from, where you turn your pants inside out. Uh, you're all called Bruce or Sheila. You all own pet koalas. Your kids ride kangaroos to school. And crocodile wrestling is a national sport. Uh, we've noticed a few other things on, while we've been here this week. Uh, the only thing really that you've got going for you is the weather, if I'm honest. <laughs> We don't know how your unemployment rates are so good because everyone just drinks beer and plays pokies all day. <laughs> Apparently it's acceptable to wear the same clothes for the whole weekend. <laughs> and your national dish, which is chicken parma, is basically just a chicken and scallop with a pizza on top. <laughs> now it's really no surprise that Richard decided to move out here and that he settled in so well. <laughs> What with his pool, his, his pool cleaning the gazebo business going from strength to strength. <laughs> and with all the boozing and gambling he does, it's no wonder that Sally sees him at all. Thanks for applauding. Thanks for applauding. So Sam and myself, we've travelled, what, 10,000 miles across three continents, six in-flight meals, four movies, <laughs> even wore our own suits, which is a struggle, let me assure you. Um, but nothing could stop us from being here today. Now, not due to the fact that Rich is one of, my, one of our most loved and oldest and dearest friends, but we couldn't pass up a chance, as it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to actually take this man apart. <laughs> now, our mouths are watering for weeks so with the opportunity to see him squirm, and it's worth every minute of the 48 hour round trip we're about to depart. Um, firstly, we'd like, obviously like to say a heartfelt congratulations to you both. Sally, I think I'll speak for the room in saying you, you look absolutely stunning today. And I'm safe in saying that, Rich, you're a one lucky pun, mate. I've no idea how she's put with you for 11 years. Um, but you've really struck gold with Sally. Um, Sally, you've got a patient saying, a great girl, and you deserve the very best in the husband to match. So rest assured, we will not stop until we find out how you bend up with him. 
Surprisingly, back home, Rich is a really popular fella. No surprising. So we asked all of our friends, all of the guys back home, you know, a general consensus of what they thought about Rich and to give us a bit of feedback. So a few things which came up were the laziest man I've ever met, <laughs> scruffiest fella I've ever known, worst toes I've ever seen. Yes! <laughs> yeah, you agree yeah. with that? Yeah. yeah. Most accident prone shouldn't be anywhere near a road or a car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what Rich really came up Rich, was the only man we know who could become an official tennis coach who can't actually play the game. <laughs> He'll always say he's got a great forehand, but no backhand. <laughs> now, I'm sure you agree, the general consensus were, he's a great bloke, has a tendency to cock everything up, but somehow always lands on his feet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much what sums up today, eh, hey, Richard? <laughs> because all those years ago, when you and Sally met, you nearly messed it up. <laughs> he told a little white lie. <laughs> he knew she was more attractive, and he knew she was a little bit younger, so he lied about his age. <laughs> he took a few years off. I know what you're thinking, we've all been there, we've all done it. But somehow he managed to keep it up for the best part of a year. <laughs> Only actually getting caught when Sally saw his passport when it went on with it. <laughs> Now you like to think he would have learnt his lesson, but oh no, you'd find out he's told a few more white lies. First up, he's told everyone he's a tennis coach, even telling people he's a theatre with Wimbledon tennis. In truth, now this is in truth, the closest he's ever come to a tennis court in the UK was banging the ball against the garage wall at home. <laughs> now I'm told he still does this today in here in Oz. He's yet to win, but the last time he took the garage to a fifth set. So right, we know so we know the English settlers would have come here in the criminal record. So it's no surprise Rachel settled here very well. As this is the man who's been caught with his head in the fridge and his hands in the till on more than one occasion. You've heard her say in a rap sheet as long as his arms. Take a look how long this man's arms are. So he may have never been caught or even convicted. But in this kangaroo court today, we're going to put him in a dock. <laughs> and we know the truth. Some of you don't, we do. And we find him guilty of the following unpunished misdemeanors. <laughs> Drunk and very disorderly, on more than one occasion. Theft, fraud, possession of an offensive weapon, petrol jumps, Getaway driver, in fact, any driving offence you care to imagine. <laughs> handling stolen goods, handling stolen counterfeit currencies, and lastly, and more importantly, deception and the impersonation of a tennis coach. <laughs> now, being asked to be the best man is a great honour. But you're then normally stuck with the task of trying to remember a few embarrassing and funny stories about the group. Not in this case. <laughs> when you've got Rich to work with, the biggest task is knowing which stories to leave out. And that's the genuine truth. So we thought we'd, few, we'd share a few stories with you today. There's plenty, plenty more. So if you'd like to buy us a beer or a glass of fizz at the bar, then we'd be more than happy to share a few after the speeches. So this first story I'm going to tell you goes back a long time ago when we were kids. And a friend of ours, Dad, he was a builder and we would often we'd do a few days work with him in the summer just to earn a few extra quid. And let's just say Richard wasn't a natural 
<laughs> As you can imagine, he pretty much ruined everything he turned his hand to. <laughs> anyway, over lunch one day, he was told not to worry, there was a lovely little job coming up for him. It was a little demolition job, there was a house a few doors down. Needed the windowsill at the front, knocking off and rebuilding because there was something wrong with it. So anyway, destroying things is pretty much up his street, so <laughs> it was a good job for Richard. Uh, he decided to show some initiative and get a head start on the job. So he hopped over the wall at the front with his sledgehammer. He gave a nice little wave to the, uh, the lovely Indian lady that sat in the front room. Like this, and just carried on smashing her windows at the <laughs> Of course he had the wrong house. <laughs> he was chased up the road by the angry homeowner. He spent the rest of the day hiding on the roof of the house we were working in. And it's safe to say that he was never asked back again. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, uh, Rich, myself, and another guy, Paul, we embarked on a round the world tour back in the early 2000s. And we spent about three months in Australia. So, we made, up, we made our way up to the Whit Sundays, so everyone knows. Some of these gorgeous beaches, amazing turquoise sea, etc. Um, and we booked a lovely racing boat, and I mean, kind of America's Cup, around the world, all single dancing racing boat. And for some reason, Rich decided to always wash in the night before we were on this racing boat. Very strange thing to do. Anyway, we got this racing boat, got on board, set underway, one gust of wind, sorry, one gust of wind, always washing in in the sea. Now I'm talking, this guy has hung his washing up on the handrails, or his pants, his socks, his shirt, the whole boat is covered in his washing. It was shocking. So we had to wear these kind of wetsuits in terms of, because there's so much jellyfish in the sea. So Rich, his washing's in the sea. Now does he jump in to save his washing and risk getting stung, or does he put his suit on and, save, and risk his washing getting sunk? What does he do? He jumps in without the suit, lands his washing, everything gets sunk, and the rest is history. <laughs> the last one I'm going to tell you is, uh, is another story from a trip that we were, we were away again. We was in Ibiza, and after a heavy, very heavy night's drinking, Richard decided to go for a nighttime swim. So ignoring the shouts of the, uh, the security and the reception staff, he runs past us, flies outside and takes a big leap into the swimming pool. And the pool had been drained down to repair the tires. So we heard the crack when he hit the bottom, and he lay there groaning. We all run over to see how he was. In true fashion, anyone else would have broke their neck, but he was carrying a big pink lilo, which managed to break most of his feet. <laughs> And as you've heard, Rich has a tendency to mess things up a tad. So much so that back home we got a little saying. If you haven't had if you haven't had a bad day, just think of Rich, because he's bound to be having a worse one. <laughs> well not today. Today he can't believe his luck. Sally said yes, and it's all gone amazingly well. Especially considering three days ago he had no shoes to put on his feet, yes. no speech to say, yes. no music dance to, dance to, no ties to put around our necks, and most importantly, no ring to put his wife's finger. Now before we raise our glasses for a toast, we have a couple of messages from people who couldn't be with us today. And the first one reads, Richard, I cannot believe that you're off the market. I will so miss the nights that we have spent together. If you ever change your mind, you know where to find me. All my love, Elton John. <laughs> There's another one here, uh, it reads, Richard, congratulations and all the best from all the staff of the clinic. <laughs> P.S. You can stop using that cream now. <laughs> Richard, it's been quiet since you've gone and we've missed not seeing you about the place. Congratulations from all the boys at Wilmington Police Station. <laughs> Uh, this one's to you, Sally. 
Um, it's a message from Richard's old football, sorry, soccer team. I can't play the right football, soccer. Football. Um, the old ruts. Uh, it reads, we've found Richard to be useless in all positions, but wishing you all the best. <laughs> It comes in from an old Swiss friend of yours, Richard. He's just come back from Miami. It's got nothing to do with the wedding, but he just wanted to say thanks for all the tips and the coaching lessons. All the best, Roger Federer. <laughs> all jokes aside, you know, even though Richard is 10,000 miles away, He'll always remain one of our closest and bestest friends, which I think is testament enough to why we're here today. He really is one of life's good guys, and he nev we've never met anyone who's got bad words to say about him. These two make the perfect couple, and there's a reason we've found a way to be here today. We know they'll make, have the most fabulous lives together and continue to look after and cherish each other for all these years to come. It's a privilege to be part of today, and we thank you both for having us. All we need to do is to ask you to raise your glasses and we'll have a toast to Richard and say, We wish you all the happiness in the world to the new Mr. and Mrs. Hayward. Mr. And Mrs. Hayward. Hello, boys. Hello, Barry.